This is the Stay Slayer. This is the brand new tool from Cobra Frame Building here. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you what it is. I'm gonna show you what you can do with it. And uh, I'm gonna show you how that'll transform what you can do in your space and why it matters and why you would want it. Let's get into it. This is the Diamond Frame Bicycle. The head tube, the top tube, the down tube, the seat tube, the bottom bracket shell, the seat stays and the chain stays, right? And so stay slayer, it's for the seat stays and the chain stays. And what it is, is it's gonna hold these tubes and it's gonna allow us to mount the fixture into the milling machine. And then with the milling machine, usually we'll use a hole saw and we will miter the tubes to fit against one another. That's the idea. You could also use this in some cases for unicrown fork blades, segmented fork blades, maybe a unicycle. There's like different applications you might kind of sneak in there and get pretty good results. But uh, it's predominantly intended for seat stays. So, you know, maybe you put the bends on them and you get them fitted up and now you need to use a hole saw to notch for the seat tube. Or you need to use, uh, it could be a hole saw or a different cutter to cut out for you know, like in this case, round dropouts, probably a hole saw. In some cases, you might use like a slitting saw in order to uh, actually, you know, prep them for like plate style dropouts. Or for the chain stays, you might actually do a flat mount disc brake prep. You know, you might machine some of this, uh, the chain stay for that, make it fit against the bottom bracket shell. And so you can do those cuts, uh, quite a lot of them in this fixture. I'm going to demonstrate how I might like to set up a set of ch chain stays in this fixture. And so there's a hell of a lot of features here to cover. Let me try and gloss over all of them so that you get a sense of what all this stuff is here for. Uh, we have fixture posts, one, two, three, four of these things. And these fixture posts are what actually clamp and hold the tubes. And whereas most fixtures for stay mitering uh, clamp tubes in the sort of like up and down vertical axis, uh, this clamps them in the horizontal axis, and I think that has some real benefits in a lot of the uh, situations where you're mitering. Uh, so these things hold the tubes 33 millimeters on center line above this face, and this face is coplanar to this face here, so the fixture posts sit at the same center line height, and that can be useful for establishing where the tubes are in space, like on a mill where you have you know, an edge finder or something. So on this bottom bracket layout grid here, we have this dotted center line that shows us the center line of the bottom bracket shell, which is where this other dotted line and where this threaded hole are. And then we have layout lines for the common widths of bottom bracket shell, 68, 73, et cetera, and the diameters, inch and a half, two inch, et cetera. And so we can use something like this machinist square and we can project these lines up into space. We can make a 2D drawing, uh, help us see where our stays are at in three dimensional space. Uh, beyond that, we have this spreader tool or this wedge. And this tries to hold these fixture posts on center line uh, within the fixture, you know, sort of equally spaced from the center line of the fixture. And so it's a really quick way to get these uh, essentially centered in the tool. Back here, we have a 3D printed tire holder, and this will hold a six millimeter thick plastic 3D printed tire dummy on the center line of the tubes, which is pretty slick. Now, I haven't finished it yet, but on the website, there will be a whole library of these parts available. The files will be free. I might do a fusion video that shows how you would sketch this in CAD. And, uh, and then I'll hopefully have like a, a little pack of these you can buy on the web store too. Uh, but you know, it can be pretty helpful to see what your tire is going to visually look like in between the stays. This here is another piece. I've modeled a bunch of these and these will be free download on the web store. And, uh, and maybe I'll have a little kit where you can buy these 3D printed from me. But basically these fit on here and they become a physical hard stop so you can space your stays around a known width. So this would typically be wider than your tire. Uh, this is 3D printed plastic. And if you watch my Instagram stories, you might've seen where I showed just how precision parts like this can be. They can be very precision if you do them correctly. Uh, within a couple thousandths of an inch uh, or less than I think a 10th of a millimeter is, uh, was the, the repeatability when I flipped it 180 degrees, which is really quite good. Uh, 3D printed parts are no joke when used correctly. 
Back here, we have a uh, laser etched scale for centerline spacing, and you can sight against these fixture posts and try and get your spacing this way so that you can have symmetry. Although you might have asymmetry because of things like disc brakes or a chainstay yoke. And so having all these scales kind of aids your, your ability to do that. Back here we have the stay rod and this is labeled and it has you know, uh, laser etched millimeter scale again. So actually really expensive and tedious to put on there but I think it's important so we do it. And uh, this is held, this stay rod is held by the dummy axle holder. So this stay rod can be used as seen and we'll make some attachments that slip over with thumb screws uh, in the future actually. That'll be pretty cool. But you can see here this whole dummy axle holder slides forward and backward and it has its own uh, number scales uh, etched and CNC engraved into it. So uh, this can actually hold a dummy axle like this guy. So you could put your dropouts on here. And in fact, I'm sure many people will uh, put their dropouts for the bike that they're building on the dummy axle holder. And then you can, you can uh, you know, cut them, you can weld them or braze them in place. And with the sub-assembly attachment, you can even do full chainstay sub-assemblies from bottom bracket through the tubes all the way to the dropouts. And then once you had done that, you would actually be able to remove this fixture post and you could come in and you could do some mitering for a flat mount chainstay uh, mounting surface, which is pretty wild. This here reads from negative 40 to positive 45 millimeters. And when you're holding a dummy axle in here on zero, then that holds the dummy axle at the same height as the center line of these tubes. Remember I said that these fixture posts hold the tube 33 millimeters above center line? Well, that is calibrated to this scale, which is pretty handy. So if you know that you wanna offset the stays up or down a certain amount, really handy. And even if you didn't know what your number was, you might do a bunch of the same bike and you might figure out what your number is and write it down in your notebook for next time. And now you have numbers you can set up to again. This one here is the chainstay length. And so if you look at this dotted line right here, that's the center of your bottom bracket. And this pointer here tells you where the center of your dummy axle is. So when this reads 425 millimeter chainstay length, that's actually the length that you would be making if you set this up for subassembly work, which is really cool. So I've loaded some seat stays. These are steel straight tubes with a taper. Commonly you would have ones that had some bends in them and you could do that on our tube bender or often people buy these pre-bent. Uh, the way that this works is I, I've installed the fixture table assembly. And so we have a clamp on the top and you can swing that out of the way or remove it completely. And here we have these two different wing nuts. And so you can raise and lower this table and you can change the angle of it and then uh, bring it into position and tighten it down again. And the idea here is that if you had these tubes only lightly snugged in the clamps, you'd be able to kind of twist them. And if you sighted between this plate and the tubes, you would be able to see if they were making good contact along the surface. And uh, that would allow you to kind of phase the tubes. So right now they're just round straight tubes, but if they had a bend in them, you wouldn't want one bend to be in this plane and another bend to be down in this plane. You can kind of level them out and then it's gonna look more appropriate. And so that's, that's the primary function of this tool. But I know that frame builders have all sorts of different ideas and processes and they're creative. And so this, you know, having threaded M6 holes and a center line and you could make laser cut or 3D printed or all sorts of other things that would bolt on here to, uh, you know, basically you can hot rod it for your own purposes. And then down here, the fixture table legs are laser etched with millimeter scales so that you can repeat a setup or you can you know, document your setup. Here on the back side of the tool, there's not a whole lot going on, but we do CNC machine these, I call them hot pockets. I just think they look nice. You know, while you're in there, might as well just have the CNC machine spend a minute and make it look good. You know, this tool could last for decades. You know, what's, what's another minute of cycle time? So if you're gonna miter seat stays on a vertical mill, you might grab this part in like a milling machine vise on your table. And so let me show you that right side up. We've laser etched it to explain these pins 
and also to give you the handy center line. This block is 60 millimeters wide, so we tell you in inch and in millimeter how far it is from the edge to the center line. That can be really useful because seat stays are cut on center line typically. And these pins make sure that this part is registered correctly against the body of the tool. And these pins here are for use, come on, come on. Those pins are for use with a Kurt milling machine vise. And uh, if you don't have that style vise or you, you get annoyed by the pins for some reason, you can easily remove them with a four millimeter hex wrench. This is the same technology that you'll find on the Miter Buddy and the Miter Daddy. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize these are easily removable. There's just a little hex, you just back them out. And uh, we might make these in different widths in the future, possibly a three inch wide version for people who like staying within inches and possibly other adapters for people who are trying to use this on, let's say a horizontal milling machine, that sort of thing. So this would be a demonstration adjusting the seat stay mitering angle and setting that angle you know, you can use this digital angle gauge or you could use a bevel protractor or there'd be some other ways, but I think these are the more common ways. I like using a digital angle gauge like that. Works pretty nice. And listen to the cut here when, when the pole saw engages. It's just a nice sounding cut. The tubes are supported well. See how, like, everything is choked up really tight and yet uh, there's no interference between the hole saw and the fixture posts because uh, the, the shape and the contour of those fixture posts, they're very low profile. It's like by intention. <laughs> it's important because uh, even though it's just mitering thin tubes, those uh, as the diameter of the cutter goes up, the cutting force gets higher and higher. And uh, mitering tubes like this actually takes a fair amount of rigidity to get good performance. And tubes being thin, they're kind of hard to hold rigidly in the first place. So. Um, it's not trivial to kind of overbuild your mitering fixtures. I would say the rigidity of a mitering fixture like this is a lot more important even than most like welding fixture rigidity, although that's also important. This is a, a new offering, you know, like we haven't seen seat stay and chain stay mitering fixtures that do all of the things that this one does. This one is a seat stay and a chain stay mitering fixture, and I would say it does both quite well. It has horizontal clamping of the tubes. It has uh, the bottom bracket sub-assembly capability, which I'll hit on in other videos more. That's a really big deal for a lot of builders to be able to start with a bottom bracket sub-assembly between the bottom bracket and the chain stays and, and the dropouts. And then with all the tire dummies and stay spacers and, and all the layout lines, it just really makes you know setting up and laying out your cuts so much easier, which is really, that's what most of the work is with a fixture like this. The cuts are the easy part, right? This is a really long arbor so that you could reach both ends of the chain stays or the seat stays. And this is not ideal in terms of rigidity, but being able to cut both ends of the tubes while the fixture is loaded with, without like unloading and reclamping the tubes, it's a big advantage. And so it can be worth the trade-off sometimes. And you see here, I slowed down the, the feed rate so that it's not loading the cutter quite so aggressively. So this fixture supports mitering both ends of the seat stays and both ends of the chain stays all in the same tool. That's, it's pretty sweet. <laughs>